Stephen, over at Gunswinger Garage, has sent out 15 of these monster dairy delivery castings and created the Dog Days of Summer Monster Dairy Build-Off. The theme, obviously, is summer. The Dog Days of Summer. And so I'm really thrilled to be participating in this, even though I wasn't sure what I was going to do at first. The one thing I knew I was going to do is I was going to cut this up. And I was going to paint it summery colors. <laughs> I, I picture this thing going over the dunes here, you know, not that far from where I live. Uh, are the dunes and, you know, there's all kinds of people running around the beach on these things. Well, pre-virus. <laughs> there was a lot of people running around on the beach. This seemed like the perfect thing for that. So uh, I take it apart, you know, doing the usual things, drilling it out, threw it in citrus strip to get all the paint off. Worked fan I, I really like how citrus strip works. Works great for me. I do let it sit for a while. Then I decided the cuts I wanted to make, I wanted to open the top because it's a summer theme. You want sunlight. You want air. So I, I'm going to pop a hole in the top. And I was kind of looking at that combi. I was thinking I might just put a rippled top or put a cloth top or do something. That was giving me an idea. And then I'm also going to punch out the sides on this thing. I'm going to uh, basically make those windows down the sides. And so you're going to see here basically where I punch out the top and, and do the sides. You know, thinking about it, I knew I wanted this summer theme. I wanted it to be airy. This thing has yellow glass in it. And so that was going to affect my color choices. And as it turns out, I, I was thinking I might need to do custom glass for it, but I didn't have to. But let me just take you through the, the cutting process first and you'll see what kind of where I'm heading with this. I did use the jeweler's saw to cut out the top, but on the sides, it wasn't really practical to use it. So as you can see, I just drilled a bunch of holes and then I just kept filing and filing and filing. <laughs> there has got to be between the top and the side windows that I ended up putting in this thing, easily two hours of filing on this. do a wheel swap and I found these reel riders that seemed perfect for this particular casting so I just ripped them off this one and uh, 
they pretty much dropped right in. I needed to file the sides of the base on the monster dairy, making it a little thinner on the body. It kind of had, kind of stuck out on the sides and I just needed to file those down a little more flush. Once I did that, the other set of wheels just dropped right in. Couldn't have worked any better. As you can see there, you know, there I have them in, even though it's in that poop brown <laughs> interior. Yes, that interior color is going to change. But yeah, they uh, couldn't have asked for a better wheel swap on that, or an easier one. Hit the base with Army Painter uh, Black Primer, and then I went over it with the Tamiya Weathering Powders, trying to just bring out the detail. The base, the base and interior has a lot of detail. And so once I had the flat black primer down, I thought, well, let me hit it with these weathering powders to bring, you know, make that stuff pop. Add a little contrast, I hit this portion of the base interior with Rust-Oleum Semi-Gloss Black, again just for some contrast. Now I did paint it, I put down the uh, Metal Cast Silver Base Coat, then I shot it from the front with the Metal Cast Red, and then from the back, pretty much all the way to the front, uh, with orange. I was trying to get a fade and you can through all the pictures you can barely see it. You can see it a little better in person. Uh, and then I went over it with the Gundam markers, the uh, fine tip, to just bring out the panel lines. The fine tip Gundam markers work really well for this. And then it's just a lot of just doing the usual detail. I use the silver sharpie like you've seen me done probably a million times now. Uh, silver Sharpie to bring out some of the highlights uh, where I'm going to put, you know, the headlights, turn signals, tail lights. I do it on the back, as you'll see here in a second. When I do the back, I go over those then with, uh, once the silver is down, I go over those with color paint. One thing that works out well too, and I hadn't really tried it until this particular casting, after doing the headlights, and you know, I, I, after I do the silver, I hit them with white in the center, but then I used the, the Gundam fine tip marker again to fill in some areas, and it almost <laughs> helps you if you're not as accurate, if you're not as perfect with the silver, it then goes over it and refines it a little bit. Like here on the back, there are some panel lines around those tail lights. And, and you know, here you see after I put down the silver, I used yellow tip uh, paint for the, for the turn indicators. You know, here I am doing the white for the headlights. So after doing all these little, you know, color things, then I went around them again, particularly with the tail lights, with the uh, panel line marker, the Gundam marker. And it really made it look like it made it look like I knew what I was doing. <laughs> it made it look like I was far more accurate than I originally was, uh, because the black it just follows the lines. And here you see me doing that. And I it's hard to explain how much just doing that improved the look of those taillights. 
it improved the precision of them is probably the best way to describe it. And then I decided while I had the paint out, I had, after I did the weathering powders, I hit that with matte clear to seal those in. And then I decided I wanted to add some color to the shocks, you know, just make, make a little more, uh, a little more things pop under there. I just wanted more color, more contrast, something else to catch the eye. And toothpicks seem to be the way to go on these. That is the Citadel paint that I'm using there. And yeah, I know. Do I paint seats any color other than red? <laughs> I don't know. It was a while back that I painted one of the car seats red. I think it was a bone shaker, actually. It might have been the bone shaker hearse. And when I did that, it was like, damn, that looks good. And I'm kind of stuck on it now. I, I do it probably a lot more than I should. But I like it. And, you know, <laughs> if I'm not doing these to make myself happy, why am I doing them, you know? So, uh, and I'm bringing you guys along, kicking and screaming all the way. But, you know, it, it's a learning experience. I'm learning how to do these things as I go. Hopefully I'm getting better at it. I, I hope you guys think I'm getting a little better at it. Uh, but it's fun. It's a kick in the pants. It's a great escape. And then I had to go over the seats with Nuln Oil. Again, that's Citadel Nuln Oil that uh, gives it a, a more worn, a more natural look. It's not then just bright, shiny red. Ah, uh, the glass. What I realized, what worked out great was I had cut out those side panels. I was thinking I was going to have to do custom glass. Then I realized the way they made it, even though it wasn't pretty on the sides of the glass, they did have glass covering those areas. So all I needed to do was cut a hole in the top because I had cut the sunroof into it and then shine the heck out of those sides because, again, they were rough. They never intended those to show. But polished up enough... Yeah, they looked as good as the front glass. So you polish them up with the flits. Flits has worked well for me. Other people use other things. Yeah, I don't do anything fancy here uh, other than gauzy. <laughs> and this, this really did need the gauzy. Because while I was able to get a good polish on those sides... Man, you dip it in gauzy and it looks great. I decided the yellow, and I, I hope you guys agree when you see it, but the yellow works with the colors I chose. I didn't need to change that glass. And here I got a little creative. That's paper. <laughs> and what I'm trying to do with the paper, I just kind of, I took, basically I took axles, soaked that in PVA glue, and then scrunched it up. I used the axles to pull it together to get those ripples. And then I just cut it down to size. And you're going to see where I'm going with it here. It's like a cloth top to cover that opening. But I'm leaving the opening open. But I'm just going to have it like it's pulled back. So it's a matter of just getting it to the right size. And yeah, it... it <laughs> I'm clumsy, and it wasn't the most willing little piece of paper there. But I finally got, you know, yeah, this is the size I want. So then I decided, okay, well, let me paint around the edges of the sunroof with Citadel black paint. And then I also end up painting that paper with the black paint. And then I get out some PVA glue. Because I didn't want to damage the paint. I uh, There's some other glues I suppose I could have used, but this uh, Eileen's, Aileen's, something like that is the name of it, glue, 
it's like a very multi-purpose glue. It, it's, it seems very forgiving. And uh, I believe it's PVA glue, basically. And yeah, here I am. <laughs> you want to have fun. You try painting a little tiny bumpy scrap of paper while you're trying to keep the bumps in it. And yet you're trying to get paint down into each of those little grooves that you gave it because it's supposed to look like a cloth roof, a fabric roof pulled back. You know, it, yeah. So I got it in there and hopefully you can kind of see it there. See, it's pulled back. Because, you know, it's summer. This thing, we need light in this thing. We need air. We're celebrating summer. Oh, and here's that glue I was mentioning. Yeah. Tacky glue. And it is. It, it, uh, it, it's a handy little thing to have around. Lord knows that big tube thing of it's probably going to dry out on me before I go through it. So I think it all works pretty well. I was really happy with the results. There you can see the yellow on the side windows. I thought about cutting those out too, and I thought, no, I actually want the glass there. And the glass you know, covers the back windows, the back doors, like it originally did, and the front. So really the only open windows are the front driver, passenger side front windows and the sunroof. So here's where we end up, you know, it, I'm going to give you some pictures here in a second, but, uh, this was a fun little build. This is a, a kick in the pants. You know, it, it's, it really is. It's, it's funny cause it's smaller than the regular dairy delivery. Um, it, it really is a little turd of a car, <laughs> but, uh, I want to thank Stephen again for sending this out to me and letting me participate in this build off. This is a contest. And by the time this video airs, um, the 15 participants will have submitted pictures that will have uh, been presented online and people were able to vote in this contest is my understanding of what's happening. And uh, hopefully this little guy does okay. Um, you know, if I get a chance, I'll probably post down in the comments if it did okay or if it if it bombed out or what. But uh, thanks again, Stephen. Be, be sure and check out Stephen's channel, Gunslinger Garage. And uh, I'm sure he'll have information on the build and all the other builders that are participating in this. Like I said, he sent out 15 of these, I believe. So there's going to be quite a few entries in this. Hopefully you can kind of see the red front on there and the orange back. So again, here's what we started with. And really the only thing that stayed the same color is the glass. <laughs> I hope you like this build. I had a heck of a good time doing this. Uh, hopefully uh, you check out uh, all the other builders. I'm sure people did all kinds of wild things with this. It, it, it has so much potential. It's a cool little casting. So thanks for checking this out. I hope you all enjoy these builds. Stay safe and healthy out there. And uh, check out the rest of the pictures. We'll catch you in the future. Thanks again for watching.